Right then boys, here we are for another episode of Norwich Career Mode where today we have ourselves another two games. We have ourselves a game against Aston Villa and a game against West Ham, uh, as you'll see here. Uh, then we have uh, two more games and in the so we'll have this episode, the next episode and the following episode after that will be a uh, tran the opening of the new transfer window the first time that we can actually make signings for this club obviously we've already made one because i messed up at the start of the season and ended up basically buying a player that i forgot that i wasn't meant to buy and now it will be back on the way uh to actually get ourselves through but um he will be coming in in january we'll have to see how he goes along gets along but right now, we have ourselves uh, a different formation again in today's episode. But I have, in fact, changed over the tactics to what I use in my Schalke career mode. I know that I do that in literally all of my career modes at the minute. But because the Schalke one is going so well, I have to do it. And with 16 games in with 9 points, it shows that we need that formation change and the tactic change. And we need as much help as we can get to actually stay in the league and probably in the job, to be fair. So let's get into this, see how it goes. And the first game is against Aston Villa. Let's get into it. And here we are, boys, for this first game of today's episode against Aston Villa. Let's see how this game goes. Hopefully it goes well with the new tactics as it worked very well for us when I was playing with my um, Creator Club series. That's gone very well since using that tactic. So hopefully at this time it will do the same thing. Let's get into this game, boys, and see how we can do. <clears throat> and here we are, boys, underway for this first game of today's episode. The only thing is uh, that I haven't changed, actually, is uh, to the formation that we use in the Schalke career mode. I want to see if we can still use this normal formation that we started out with, uh, with these tactics, and still see if it still works, basically. As we cross the ball into Archer, who has space, and he takes a decent effort at goal, but it is saved by the keeper. And that ball has been played out wide. If Archer can get there, he hasn't quite done so, but it was a decent attempt at trying to get there from the young lad, our youth prospect that has just come into the squad. Uh, it's played now out wide to target again. If we can get inside with Ramsey uh, playing the ball into Ollie Watkins. Can't really block off any attacks at the moment as Sorensen has not managed to deal with that. And it's another good block from Obed De no, it's a penalty because of a handball. 31 minutes in and I keep saying I've got to switch this off because the amount of penalties that are given away because of this is ridiculous. And that is another ridiculous one, to be honest, from where that's been hit from and the position that his arm was in. But it is given away and after this game, I'm definitely turning it off because it's just getting ridiculous now. As Ing steps up to take the penalty. And it is saved by Angus Gunn. Let's go. That's exactly what we needed after that penalty. But uh, I'm still switching it off even though I saved it. Right then. Here we go. Back underway again. Uh, we've got uh, Ramsey on the ball. It's two Ings who's taken the shot. And it's just over the bar from the lad. That is half time. We are at a one apiece. Uh, no, we're not. We're at nil-nil um, at the moment. No goal scored for either side. Both sides playing quite well defensively at the minute. We haven't quite got our attacking prospects going at the moment in this game. But we've definitely look, still looked decent uh, when we've came forward. Definitely looked a lot more promising at least. Tazilis to throw this into Billy Gilmore, who's been pressured there straight away from collecting the ball. Tazilis being forced back. They've blocked off that option to the centre-back. We'll try and outpace Ings, and he's done so. Look at this from Tazilis. I wasn't expecting that. Puki into Melu, who spreads it out wide nicely to Campwell. Pings it back into the centre. Oh, what an effort that was from Blake Archer. Oh, my God, Blake. Oh, imagine if that was his second goal ever in the Premier League or just in general in professional football and he found that into the bottom corner. That would have been unreal, but unfortunately Martinez does meet it. As our centre-back doing absolute bits for us at the moment. Melu is on it. We'll spread it out wide to Aarons again who can ping it into the centre. It's another good cross and it's another decent headed attempt at goal. 
and we've definitely turned up the pressure in uh, on Aston Villa in this second half so far. I think it was Tazilis who got his head to it. It was pretty much at Martinez, but it was a decent attempt anyway. And again, it's there for the boys. It's Ramsey. They're playing the ball around very nicely at that point. Target is beaten Aaron's, but that was poor from Aaron's. I don't know what he did there. But again, this lad comes out, tries to claim the ball. Can't quite do so this time, but he's marked off his man nicely. Aaron's again can't get inside. And it's a good effort at goal, but a good save from Angus Gunn again, who has been literally on fire so far today. And here we go again. It's played short from the corner from Aston Villa. They've played it to the outer skirts of the area. And now back inside. It's Ings who's taken the shot. And we've managed to get away with it with this one hitting the ball. Now, Melu can't quite get his foot into that tackle. Target beats Aaron's again. But it's a good co covering tackle again from Aaron's. And Campwell to switch the play this time. Blake Archer, if he can win that header in, he can. And play that ball through. It could be a last minute winner come on cut to see list no archer no come on surely pookie no oh my god how is not one of them shots been played into the back of the net you can spread it out wide to Aaron's. Play it back into Pookie. It wasn't the best of passes, but we've kept the ball anyway. Blake Archer, play it back to Pookie. Keep the ball, son. Uh, we'll give it off to Campwell. And now to Aaron's. Whip that ball into the centre. It's a beautiful cross. And somehow he hasn't put that header on target, Aronson. How is that header not gone on target? That should have been 1-0 as well. Oh, two massive chances at the end of the game that we have just absolutely wasted. Ball smashed long from Martinez here. If we can get one last attack coming from this uh, attack. Come on, here we go. Blake Archer, play the ball back round. It's Todd Cantwell. We're into the box. Takes the shot and it's saved by Martinez again. With literally the last minute of the game. This is going to be the last piece of play of the game. If we cannot score from this, it's going to end a nil-nil draw. And it's Archer to whip this ball in. We've got to whip it into a decent area this time. And it's going to go into around there. It's a good cross. It's a good header. And again, it's saved by Martinez. He is the literally the only reason his team are in this game right now. Oh my god, the second half has been all thrills and this game could have literally went either way right now and somehow neither team are in the lead. And now, again, to whip this ball into the box. It's Blake Archer whipping it into the centre. And none of our players, apart from him, oh, it's another unreal save again from Martinez. Twan Azebi has got injured in the process. But that is another big attempt at goal that we haven't managed to put in the back of the net. How has this not happened yet? How are we not in the lead? And literally, Consor has just come on for probably the last play of the game. I've said said that for the last two corners but Archer again to whip this ball in and it's again into a good area but this time it is cleared and that is the end of the game. Martinez putting in a man of the match performance at the end of this game to sh just confirm his side to have a draw, a point out of this game because if it wasn't for him we'd won this all ends up in that second half. But honestly, this game could have went either way. Either side could have won it. We deserve to, the way we handled that last uh, piece of play at the end of the game. But somehow, Martinez just kept getting his hands to it. And it is uh, a nil-nil draw at the end of it. But one of the very few games this season that we've actually managed to keep a clean sheet. And it's another point to add to the board, which is the main thing. And here we are for the post-match uh, interview after that game. Somehow we had 12 shots and didn't manage to put any of them in the back of the net. I don't understand how that's happened, but uh, can how can we get a win? After that performance, I don't have a fucking clue because we should have been winning that game all ends up. Somehow we didn't do so. And yeah, I just don't have any answers to be honest at the minute uh, after that. There wasn't much between the teams today. What did you make of the result? Um, it could have went either way, but my players, yes, genuinely, they gave me everything today. And I'm. it's unfortunate for them not to actually come away with anything from this game apart from a point. 
Uh, did you play for the nil-nil today? Um, no, you could see. We were really determined out there to get the win. Um, hard work it is in its own reward. Uh, no, we say we really determined out there. You could see we had 12 shots at goal. Somehow just couldn't put them in the back of the net today. Don't know what that was about, but we didn't end up doing so. And yeah, a nil-nil draw it was. Right then, boys, so we have a risk of losing a couple of players out of our squad at the moment. We have these two lads here that I'm not going to sign to a contract at the minute because I think I might end up getting rid of them. Kabak is a player that will probably... OK, we can approach to buy him, but 19 million probably isn't going to cut it for us unless he can stay to right at the end of the season. Again, the same with Brandon Williams. I'm not that bothered about keeping him, to be honest. Uh, not going to lie to you. And the way that this man is playing at the minute, uh, I don't really need any of the other sets because he is bossing it at the moment and I'm loving playing with him. Uh, we've got him to come back off of loan at some point. Uh, who's this dude? Okay, he's not looking too bad either. But we have Todd Cantwell and Roop who could also be losing their contracts. So we'll delegate a renewal for him. He's on 24,000 at the minute. So let's go for... Let's go for 26 and a half to whatever he says. And he's accepted 26 and a half. So I'll definitely take that. Uh, Roop, again, we'll, we'll delegate a renewal for him as well. Let's have a look. He's on 23,000. Let's delegate a renewal and see if he'll take a page cut. He will. He'll take a 3,000 uh, page de uh, a wage decrease for two year contract. So he'll be coming back in. Billy Gilmore is definitely a player I'm going to look at signing at the end of this season uh, because he is playing unreal at the minute. And uh, is that everyone that we need to sign back? Yep, that's everyone we need to sign back to a contract. So we will leave that where it is. Right then, boys. So uh, we will go into our next game against West Ham where today we have ourselves uh, pretty much a fully changed side apart from Angus Gunn and Campwell and Melu. Uh, the rest of the players have been changed because they were either tired or I just wanted to give another player a run out. So that'll be uh, here for today's game. Let's let's see how this one goes. Hopefully it goes just as well as the last game. Hopefully a little bit better. And here we are for West Ham today. Uh, where you can see the bubbles floating in the air. That's a nice little addition, isn't it? But it it does look very fake. I'm not going to lie to you. But we are here for the game against West Ham at the... Is it the West London Stadium or something like that? Or is it something else now? I can't remember what it's actually called. Uh, but we have got this game against West Ham. Unfortunately, we uh, I wasn't able to turn off the handballs in the penalty area for today's game. Because you have to go out of... Um, the career mode screen to actually turn that off so i couldn't be bothered to do that we just go straight into this game and then i'll do it after this game is finished but let's see how this one goes hopefully just finally just add that little bit of a finishing touch than what we couldn't do in the last game let's see what we can do and see what we can do it would have been a hell of a lot better if i just used my normal green kit to, uh, well yellow kit to be honest because then i wouldn't have been able to have to put up with this shit but noble is charging forward mellow and they are already causing his problems with lanzini putting the ball into the back of the net a easy finish that, okay he was offside but that was an easy finish that gun should have been saving in that situation uh and he played outstanding in the last game and luckily for us Lanzini was offside Bashiri to Zimmerman who can try and spread the ball out wide and he's done terribly in doing so now they are on the attack again with uh, Noble now plays it inside again Bashiri is doing well so far obviously our main man at the back isn't playing today because he is tired and that is another shot at goal for West Ham and it is saved again from Gunn for Nels to whip this ball into the centre. Should be cleared from Placheca. It is, but not the best of clearances. As Noble gets the ball and it's deflected into the back of the net from Bashiri. It's a shot from uh, Bowen who has managed to put that into the back of the net. Uh, off a deflection, a massive deflection to be honest, from Bashiri. And you can already tell how this game's going to go. As that shot is smashed at Bashiri and it's really absolutely terrible to be honest the keeper fair enough it's going to be difficult to deal from with that area but mm, yeah one nil to them 
beaten him. And it's an interception that time. Again, not the best. But Mumbai is charging forward with the ball. We'll play it inside now. If we can spread it back out wide to Placheca. And now whip a ball into the centre. It's a good cross. And it is met. Surely, surely. How is that not ended up in the back of the net? Uh, play it inside again to Norman. And he's tried to find a pass off. He has been so bad this season, to be honest. He's one of our best players in this side, over, overall right uh, wise. And he can't, honestly, he's been so poor. And that is another poor decision from me. And it's another goal to West Ham. It's 2-0 now. And honestly, absolutely dreadful. Goalkeeping in this game, the last game couldn't beat the keepers this game has been fucking shocking from angus gunn and it's now 2-0 to west ham both goals have gone in at his near post including well to be fair three have gone in at his near post and one of them was obviously the goal that got disallowed oh man this has gone horribly wrong i don't know what it is uh, about this west ham side but i don't think i'm going to be able to get anything out of this game no goals or anything to be honest because this has gone horribly wrong uh for Knowles is trying to beat his man and he's done so it is into the box again and that is blazed over the ball from uh from susek but somehow we haven't managed to do so susek has managed to play a ball beautifully round the back there to bowen and again, Norman is doing absolutely jack shit in CDM. Move out of Melu's way for a start because you're just getting in every fucker's way at the minute is Norman. And now it's uh, there for us and we still can't play the ball out of defence. It's spread out wide to Finals. And again, they're trying to come forward. It's not great defensive plays from Mumba. And he's not managed to deal with it in this time. Gunn has managed to save a shot at his near post. Right, Melu to whip this corner in, hopefully to a dangerous area, just before half-time. It's not a bad cross, but Sergeant didn't, didn't go up for the header. It's came back out to Melu, and it's again a good cross. This time, Sergeant does get his head to it. It's poor goalkeeping from whoever's in goal for West Ham today, but we have managed to get ourselves a goal on the score sheet to bring us back into contention for this game. It was not the best of plays from our side at all. But we've managed to get away with it. And somehow Melo has played a ball di directly onto Sargent's head there. He's played very well. It's terrible goalkeeping. Only turned onto the post and it's in the b back of the net for the boys. It's 2-1. That is half time. And a perfect time to score that goal with Sargent. Hopefully that will give us a little bit of... Um, encouragement going into the second half i really hope so because i do need this to happen it's his only shot at goal and i think only our only shot at goal so far to be honest um has ended up in the back of the net somehow we didn't bundle one over the line earlier on in the game god knows how that didn't go in but it didn't do so and uh yeah we are 2-1 down but hopefully just hopefully we can get ourselves back onto level terms uh, and it's a chance for West Ham to come forward again. I am, I've got tr the only thing is, defending was hard enough in the first half when I could see the players. Now defending in the second half is going to be ten times harder. But uh, as I say that, they're into the box anyway. And Mikel Antonio with a shot at goal, but it's a good save from Gunn. Ball to be whipped in from the corner. It is a clearance of some kind, and we've got the ball at the end of it as well. As Dowell is the man on it. He's not got the most of paces, this uh, young lad from our scam. And it's a good pass inside to Sargent, who has carried the ball. And he smashed it into the back of the net of Sargent. The ginger man himself, up front, has just managed to put the ball into the back of the net. The most white man you will ever see with ginger hair. And somehow he has an afro. And he's just smashed that into the back of the net. It's poor goalkeeping again from who is whoever's in goal for West Ham because he should be doing better in that situation. It's Fabianski. But at the end of the day, I do not give a damn. We're back on level terms and it's two apiece. Can we try and get that winning goal? Right, play inside to Zimmerman. And now we'll play it off to Byram who has not got the most of stamina at the minute for some reason. But... Anyway, uh, we'll try and win something. Okay, again, it's Sargent winning the ball back in the centre. Melu now has it. Who can spread a ball, hopefully, out wide to Cantwell. Cut inside, son. And it's not a bad effort at goal, to be fair. Not the most power, but a decent effort. 
And now we can try and build ourselves coming back forward again with Placheca playing a nice ball into Dowell. Now Melu to try and find a ball on the outside. That's a bit too far on the outside, but we'll whip the ball in. And it's Sargent again. This time he's headed it over the bar. Oh, imagine if that man had come in the first time we've scored more than one goal. I'm pretty sure in a Premier League game this season, apart from when we started the series with goals flying in at all angles somehow he's just imagine if the first game back we come back get our first three points with a hat trick from Sargent as Cantwell plays the ball down to Mumba who's been took out surely that's a foul if the foul was before to them how is that one not a foul holy god and that is played straight through and it's into the back of the net West Ham have taken the lead back in the 77th minute with Jared Bowen and honestly, I don't know what to do in that situation. That was nothing I could do for that at all. As they've played a ball easily through the centre. And somehow, some way, they've found their way back into the lead. After literally hardly any chances for them in this second half. And I don't understand how the thing leading up to that wasn't a foul. That is full time and we have ended up losing the game 3-2 after such a good comeback to get ourselves back on level terms from 2-0 down and somehow they've managed to grab a goal at the end of the second half or halfway through the second half shall I say and we've managed to give away a very easy point and a point that could have turned into three for us to be honest the way we were playing and we ended up letting it get away from us. Poor. Right boys, here we are back for the post-match interview after that game and uh, it was quite a performance. It was uh, food for thought, I'd say. Our pl uh, yeah, exactly, food for thought. He played very well today. I was very proud of the lad. Could have grabbed a hat-trick, unfortunately he didn't. After 10 games without a win, yeah, 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 whatever. Um, the time isn't the time to panic because we've been playing well in the last two games even though we didn't get anything from this one. No, it doesn't. Just lacked a little bit of self-belief to take charge when it mattered, to be honest. We needed to take charge when we mattered, and it didn't happen. Right then, boys. So, uh, it's something that I've decided to do literally after already recording this episode. Uh, so, if there is a bit of a weird cut in it, I, uh, this is the reason why. Basically, for the Halloween weekend, I am going to do some special episodes. So... Today it will start with just this episode which will come out today. It will be a four game episode which will take us up until the January transfer window which is just here. Um, uh, after these two games against Arsenal and Crystal Palace. I'll also do two episodes uh, on Saturday which will be uh, four game episodes as well. Then I'll do two uh, more on Sunday. There will also be four game episodes for, um, obviously it will be for the career modes that actually come out on them days. Uh, that will be four game episodes as well. And then for a final big uh, thing for uh, the Halloween night, basically on the Sunday, we'll have one last extra episode which will take us full circle back round to this career mode, uh, which I've absolutely messed up there, uh, where I will go through the whole of the January transfer window in that one episode for the celebration of Halloween. And then I'll also maybe, I'm not too sure yet whether I'm going to do it for Bonfire Night, I'll definitely let special episodes out uh, for bonfire night which will be the fifth uh, the next friday after this um so yeah there will be definitely special episodes on that uh, day but whether i'll do it over the full weekend i'm not sure just yet it this just worked out best for me for the way i would be playing it otherwise i'll be playing like halfway through the January transfer window with this side where I could play the whole way through it if I just make this into a special episode as well. So I thought might as well give you boys a treat and do that that way. And let's get straight into it uh, with this game against Arsenal for the uh, start of the special episode with Halloween. Let's go. And here we are boys. Uh, back for the game now, the third game of this episode against Arsenal, where today we are going to go into this one. Uh, I'm sorry I have explained this like halfway through to the episode, so you guys are probably watching this. I'm probably going to describe it as a Halloween special in... Um, 
in the uh, in the description and the title of this video and you guys are probably thinking where the fuck does the special come into this and where do you actually explain what's going on but i've done it now so hopefully you guys have watched this long into the video and you know what's going on but let's get straight into this which is going to be the start of the special uh well start of technically the special episode of this norwich the special part of the episode shall i say and let's get into it boys let's see how we can do against fourth placed arsenal that is half time. We've gone in at nil nil. No ch uh, chances really in this first half. We've had a couple of shots where we've had go into a decent area, but unfortunately, uh, the Arsenal defenders have got there in front of the shot, and no shots actually at goal realistically yet. That um, their goalkeepers had to actually save at the minute. There's only been one effort, I'm pretty sure, from Arsenal so far. So both defenses definitely holding up very well so far. It's the man Saka on the ball. Melo is doing well at defending against this attack at the moment. It's played inside now to Lacazette. This is where we've got to be careful of their attacking force as Odegaard gets onto the ball and he smashes the ball into the back of the net from, I'm pretty sure that is their second shot of the game. It's into the back of the net and Martin Odegaard puts Arsenal into the lead. That is exactly what I was talking about where we have to be careful because Odegaard's finishing from outside of the box on this game is fucking outrageous and he's just shown it there picked out the top corner and it's a very easy finish for the Arsenal man in the end it's unfortunately not blocked out and it's a very nice finish there from Odegaard I'm not gonna lie but we should be doing better with they've only had two shots at goal Right, Melo is the man standing over the ball. And if I'm right in saying, yes, uh, Blake Archer is looking like a king of free kicks this season. So, if he can step up, he takes it. And it's not quite hit hard enough from the young lad. Uh, we've had a couple of very good attacks. Like I say, in the second half, we've definitely looked like the more dominant side. And now Arsenal coming forward again. And this man at the centre-back, again, is absolutely dominating. Uh, still getting the tackles in. And unfortunately, so far, they're looking like getting another. And it's a good save from Angus Gunn. Right, they've played the ball short here. Sorensen tries to come out and get the tackle against Odegaard. He doesn't manage to do so. And the ball's into the box now. There's so many players in the way. And he still manages to get the shot at goal. Right, Pepe on the ball again. Uh, he, I think, has only actually just come on the field, to be honest. And somehow, we're actually going to lose this game, I think. Because, for some reason, that's another unreal effort at goal. Come on, man. What is that kind of finishing at goal? And we can't get a throw in quick enough at the moment, as we'll give the ball to Melu. Now to Billy Gilmore, can try and thread the full ball through. And he should have been reacting quicker there, because he should have been getting in the way of whoever blocked his pass off in the first place. Melu is trying to get out here and defend against Aubameyang, who is now on the field, who absolutely ruined us in the first game that we played against Arsenal. And it looks like it's going to be another defeat against this side, because, well... Some unreal finishing. That's all that's happened so far. We shouldn't be any more than 1-0 down. And at the moment, we're not. As I say that, Kabak has completely been taken out here. And it's a good save again from Gunn. And somehow, some way, we're actually going to lose this game. I don't understand how, as Melu gets in another very good challenge this time. We'll play the ball into Rashika, can give it out wide again to Campwell. If he can whip a ball into the centre, it's a good cross, but couldn't find our man again. And unfortunately, Billy Gilmore is not quite the player we needed there. It was more Melu's job, that one. And now it is being played forward. It's a good interception. And that is a terrible pass back. And it should... How are these shots going in from outside the box so often? It's 2-0 now. It's ridiculous the amount of shots that go in from this side. Like from outside the area, I'm pretty sure in the last couple of updates, they've actually toned down the shots going in from outside the area. And two, both of the goals we've conceded today have been from outside the area. Fair enough, that one was my fault. Don't get me wrong, but how are they finding that much of the corner in every shot that they take? It's actually unreal. That is full time. We've lost the game 2-0 at home against Arsenal. And after such a dominant performance, somehow we've come away with a 2-0 loss. Two finishes from both outside the area. And like I say, it, they've toned down the shots from outside the area. But still both of the shots have found the way from the back of the net. 
And every shot they had from outside the area today was on target. And looked like they were going in the back of the net. I don't get it. I really don't. Because they did not deserve the win today. We deserved at least a draw. At least. But unfortunately somehow still came away with a defeat. And here we are for the post-match interview after that performance. It was an unreal performance. Don't give me this 11 games bullshit. Uh, we are still have to stay strong. We're playing well. We're playing well. Um, this can't have been much fun to watch as a manager. We were doing perfect. We should have got more out of the game. Um, there's nothing there that actually describes the way I feel about this game. So we're going to have to le uh, leave that as it is. Are Arsenal just a better team than because uh, they've won both of the games against us so far? Um, we need a, uh, our senior players to step up. Let's go with that. I don't know because at the end of the day, we didn't deserve a defeat today. Right here, after that Arsenal game, we have a youth player who is unsettled. It is Julian Hagen. So let's go into this now and have a look who this man is. Okay, so it's one of the decent players we've actually got. So we're going to go ahead and promote him to the senior team. There we go. And after that, we have a message from Hagen saying, I've been dreaming about this happening. Uh, thanks for giving me the chance in the senior squad, boss. I'm desperate to show everybody, everybody, everybody what I can bring to the team. Okay, um, I was impressed. Just give it, just keep bringing it forward for us, hopefully, pal. That's what I'm hoping. We now have another press conference just before the Crystal Palace game where today... Uh, can your boys avoid the drop? Uh, we believe in ourselves. I think I think we can this season. If we carry on playing the way we are playing, there's no way we're going down because we're going to keep picking up points, and at some point it's going to be a three points. Um, we are going to have to make changes. We'll focus on our performance. Uh, and finally, what we have to answer is uh, why has the team been struggling? Um, it's hard to be sure. Uh, to be honest, it is hard because we're still putting in performances recently. Because um, at the end of the day, we're still putting in decent performances and actually looking good. We're just not getting the we're not getting the results at the minute. It's unfortunate. Now for our game against Crystal Palace, where today we have made a couple of changes with Brandon Williams coming in as left uh, as left back because the other lad was uh, tired, and both of the CDMs have been changed. And I've just realised that uh, Max Ahrens is also quite tired, so he's going to have to come off. So let's change him out for I have not a clue who to be honest. Byram's going to have to come in today. Hmm. Not exactly what I wanted, but we're going to have to do it. Right, here we are for this game against Palace. Let's see what we can do in this one. Hopefully, have that pick up in performance, not even in performance, of results. Because this is such a game. These games recently, we've played well. We've just not picked up the points, which is unfortunate. But let's hope that we can actually pick these points up now and see how this one goes. Um, can he try and find some space in the middle though? That is the question. Roop to uh, Mumba who has found an absolute tragic pass that time. And it's Eze who's trying to come forward. Now to Saki. Uh, into Ayu who has beaten his man. And now it should be 1-0. And it's a good save by your boy uh, Angus Gunn. Right. Ball is smashed long from the Palace keeper. And the header is actually won this time from Mumba. Blake Archer is the man on it. He slides the ball through to Timo Puki, And he's put it straight at the keeper. That was such a good opportunity to get a goal. That is half time. We've gone in at 0-0 again this time. Um... Palace are definitely looking a lot more threatening than what Arsenal did in that last game, which is a little bit more worrying for us. And uh, we've had a couple of chances, not too many. Had a couple of shots at goal, again, not too many uh, chances really going in for us. But if we can hopefully carry on trying as much as we possibly can and trying to get them chances coming forward. Puki had a massive chance that he messed up horribly, but hopefully we can try and improve a bit more today. But so far, 
uh, not doing too bad. We've made a couple of changes now uh, at the moment as Rashik has come on the pitch and won the ball straight away here. And we can slide the ball through to the other man who has just come on the field, which is Sargent. If he can find a ball back across goal to Rashika and he has found the head off, but it's a save from Guita. Uh, Byram has been run absolutely ragged today, so I'm not surprised that he has not got a lot of stamina left. But if we can get Mumba here, and he's not quite managed to make the tackle, and Byram, like I say, isn't the quickest of players against Eze. It's now to Mitchell, who's playing the ball into Kiyate, switches the play nicely, and Tazilis is the man who has come to try and meet that. And he's done well so far. Brandon Williams is there. And now it's played inside to Ayu. And again, it's inside. Connor Gallagher takes the shot. And there we go. Saved from uh, Gunn. But we are in a dangerous area here with Williams. And now to your man at centre-back. And he has made a terrible touch. And it's Eze who's coming forward again after a poor touch from that centre-back. He's been ace all season. And we've managed to get away with it again. But Zaha now is on the field and playing up front that I've just noticed. So that's going to be even more dangerous for us to try and defend against. Mumba is the man who was trying to get there. Come on, Byron. Byron, mate. Mate, I know you've not got the most pace. But fuck me, you've got to be getting to that. And now Mumba again, to be fair, has put in an absolute shift today. And that has been cleared. That man in centre-back this season so far since he started playing has been absolutely unbelievable at defence. Unbelievable. That is full time. We've managed to come away with another point out of this game. It's three points from, f uh, well, three points from four games in today's episode. Um, a draw in three of them. I think two of them have actually been nil-nil draws, to be fair. And the other one might have been a two-all draw. Um, or we might have actually lost two games today, actually. I can't remember, but um, we've definitely lost one and drew one in these last two games that I've just played. And unfortunately, we've not managed to come away with another victory. Uh, we should have probably got one out of the Arsenal game. Instead, we ended up losing it. And this game, I don't think we deserve to win it, but neither team did, I don't think, today. Neither team really deserved a goal, to be honest, the way that we're, uh, both teams were attacking. No one really had any chances today. Right, post-match interview again today, now against, uh, well, from this game against Crystal Palace. It's 12 games now without a win, yet uh, there's no time to panic at the moment. We have to keep trying to push for these points as much as we possibly can. Um, have, happy to have taken a draw today. Um, yeah, we, tr we fought hard today, to be honest. We probably should have got more out of it no we shouldn't have got more out of it today we could have very easily lost it with the way that uh palace played but we were looking not to and i thought the very two the two sides were very committed out there which is very true but like i say nothing really happening today unfortunately Right, and that is where we are going to call the end of the first Halloween special for this Halloween weekend. Uh, where today, let's have a look what we've actually come out with. We've came out with um, a 3-2 loss. Yeah, we did end up losing that game to West Ham. Uh, we got a 0-0 draw against Aston Villa. The two points we've actually picked up, we've actually conceded no goals. Uh, which is not bad, but it's against two sides that we probably should be picking up points against if we want to be scathing uh, survival. Um, we've had three points out of this month, which is better than most months, to be fair. Um, where we've lost 3-2, we've drew twice 0-0, and we lost against Arsenal somehow. I don't have a clue how. 2-0 uh, to them as well. But unfortunately, we've not managed to get ourselves on the score sheet today. And hopefully we can do so in the next episode where, like I say, we'll be the last, very last and the most special of the Halloween specials where we will play through the whole month of January of this uh, career mode with games so far against uh, Leicester City in the league. We've got um, Manchester City in the FA Cup at home, which we definitely ain't winning that one. Uh, we've got Everton at home in the league and we've got Watford which is a big game that we need to be getting three points out of uh, away from home in the league as well so we'll have to wait and see for that episode uh, that'll be four well actually to be fair that'll be three games let's hope that one of them gets actually moved it's either that or we'll end up playing three games in the next episode which will be these ones here um but 
uh yeah so we've got four games in the next episode so far we've got a whole month of the january transfer window but you'll have to wait for sunday night for that to come out i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode if you have please do leave a like subscribe if you are new and i'll catch you in the next episode boys peace Rise up from the ashes, wings on my back, stay lit like a matchstick, we ain't coming back, I swear. Just let go and see what happens, gotta let go to see the magic happen. They got is a quick change, so we like them in phase. I just bought a new watch, time to make my wrist ring. The zero